your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia, based on the famous play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. Don't you think you've been up enough today, Claudia? I'm only trying to get used to it, Mama. Get used to it lying down. You won't be so tired. Mama, are you going to worry about me forever? I certainly am. I am a mother now. You've only been a mother for one week and two days, and you've been my daughter for 19 years. So long. I shall worry about you for as long as I please. I suppose I can't deprive you of your few pleasures in life, Mama. Then get back into bed. All right, all right, all right. Go away from me. Now, skit, scat, scoot. I have to learn to navigate by myself again. Now, doing very nicely. Oh, now, why do they make these hospital beds so high? They're so hard to get in and out of. That is why. Oh, Mama, how long am I going to droop around like this? I thought that after I had the baby, I'd start feeling like me again. Instead, I hang around my neck like an old suit of clothes. It'll be at least a month before you're... A month? At least. Oh, such a business. There ought to be a better method. The world has been waiting for you to discover it. David can't stand sissy women. Can't he? I think he can't stand women who overdo worse. Besides, no man I've ever met, not even David, has minded being let know he's the stronger. David knows. What time is it, Mama? Hello, everybody. Hello. Well, how's the little family today? Just wondering when you get here. Hello, Hercules. Mm, she's feeling good today. <laughs> oh, darling, you look so warm. Mm, it's only 90 out. Only 90? Mm -hmm. Here, let me wipe your forehead. Now, let go. I'm not your son, remember. I'm a big boy. Oh, you see, you Claudia? See what? None of your business. All right. See if I care. How are you feeling, Mrs. Norton? Fine, wonderful, super blissful. Is she really all right, Mother? She's talking a lot. I think she's getting her strength back. Oh, well, that's no sign. But if you are feeling all right, what are you doing in bed? I thought I'd find you dancing a jig in the hall. Oh, Mom insisted I get back into bed. Besides, I'm coming home tomorrow, so I must feel all right. Don't There's you think no I There's no need to rush things now. I don't think you want me home. You're 100% right. I don't I... want you home if you're hurrying things. If you feel like a mouse, don't pretend to me that you're Atlas. No, he's calling me names. David, I can lie around in bed at Mama's just as well as here. Oh, you ought to be flattered, Grandma. Mm. She prefers your apartment to this swank hospital. But only, only, mind you, because it's cheaper. I married a budget. A fine budget. Nobody lets me budge. Oh. Blue is right. <laughs> now, Mama, listen, let's get organized. Let's get organized. Is everything all ready for my son's and my homecoming? Well, what do you call what? everything? A red carpet and a ten-piece band, exactly. Mama. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Oh, I must write that down. I clean forgot about the band, but everything else is there, I think. Such as? Well, all the bottles and the sterilizer, the bath and net. Check. Literally hundreds of, hundreds of diapers and <gasps> safety pins and baby oil. Must you hear the whole list? I must, I must. Is the baby carriage there yet? It better be there by tomorrow. The baby won't have anything to sleep in. Well, let him sleep in the sink. If you were a fish, that would be perfect. But he isn't, unfortunately. When was the carriage supposed to get there? Didn't Julia tell you, Claudia? She only said it was being sent. Well, these days, there's no telling when they'll deliver it. How soon before the baby can sleep in a bed? Without pampering, darling, in about, um, four years. Well, that puts quite a new light on the matter. Mm. I guess we'll have to get the baby carriage home, hmm? I'll call up the store and act firm. Firm. I'll make them deliver it today. You do oh, that. that would be very effective. Oh, very. You don't think so? No. Well, then somebody's got to go and get it. And I'm in bed. Well, I, I, I won't do it. I. Oh, no. no. I wouldn't think of having you put yourself... I, why, after all, he's, he's, he's only your son. I'm drafted. I'll do it. You? You can't carry a baby carriage. Baby carriages are not carried, ignorant. They're pushed. Oh. And I pushed one long before you were born, David. You must have still been in short pants, Mother. Very short. Three-cornered. <laughs> <laughs> Any excuse to get out of here. I'm going to fetch that carriage. Oh, isn't she sweet, David? She loves to pretend she doesn't care a bit for her grandson. Look at her. Rushing off to the store for him. Can't wait. You have shamed me, Mother. How would you like company? Nobody expects me to get any work done these days anyway. Don't use me as an excuse for your fatherly sentiments. You two women. Well, I'm certainly grateful we had a son. 
It'd be a pleasure not to be the only man in the family. If you turn that boy against me... I'm beginning my campaign now. Mama and I are going down to that department store, and we're going to pick up that perambulator, and we're going to take it home. And the first thing tomorrow, I'm going to tell my son he has his father to thank for the bed that he lies in. Well, Mother, I think you look very handsome in that gray hat pushing this gray perambulator. Yes, yes, I I must say that that whole ensemble is very definitely becoming to you. Oh, hush up with your flattery. (laughs) It's quite an improved piece of machinery, isn't it, It's terrific. Brakes, pedals, and gears, almost like driving a car. Does it push easily? As smooth as silk, not a bit of noise. Mm -hmm. Would you like to try it? Me? Going down the street pushing this, this thing? You'd better get used to it. It's not man's work. It's father's work. Life is just one big trap. I started out to be an architect, and I end up pushing a perambulator. That's one of the nicer things about life. Go on, push it a little. Well, only if you're getting tired. Oh, yes, I'm getting tired, very tired, exhausted. I I can't push another step. All right, all right. You don't have to put on such a big act. I'll take it. It does work easily, doesn't it? Of course, it's light now. There, There isn't a baby in it. Oh, eight pounds will make an awful difference. I feel like a battleship on a shakedown cruise. A very handsome battleship. <laughs> and you actually look as if you were pushing your son in this carriage. <laughs> the funny part is I, I feel as if I were. Look, David. Look at the smiles on the people's faces as they walk by you. Look at that little old lady. Oh, nonsense. Nobody even notices people push baby carriages around all the time. Well, don't say I didn't warn you. Here she comes. Pardon me, but uh, would you be terribly embarrassed if an old lady wanted to congratulate you? Well, no, not at all. Uh, There are so few fathers these days who will take their children out for a stroll. I think it's just lovely of you. Well, thank you so much. Oh, he must be so cute and so small. He is. So small, you'd hardly see him. Oh, I would just adore to have a little look. Just one little look. Of course you would. But I uh, I, I wouldn't if I were you. He'll, uh, he'll wake up, won't he, Mother? Will he? I don't think so. Mother. What is it, David? If you say another word. Oh. Was I being too forward? No, of course not. Then... uh... Uh, But um, uh, any other day, madam... My son-in-law, you see, is such a new father, so nervous yet. Oh, I should think you would have been pleased. Oh, David, you naughty boy. (laughs) (laughs) Me naughty? You disillusioned her. She wanted to see your son. I'll get even with you, Mother. Now, you wait and see egging her on like It's a shame we didn't have a baby to show her. (laughs) David, wait for the light. You want to get your son run over? Uh Uh-oh. Well, all right. All right, you can be pushing that pram across now. I've held up the traffic for you. Oh, that's very nice of you. Oh, don't be thanking me, lady. I get seven of me own, and I know how the little woman feels when I take them out, and she ain't along. Thinks a man just can't maneuver safely. Here. I'll walk across. Well, we're very grateful and a little embarrassed. Not at all, not at all. We men got to stick together. Hey, more gentler there, man. You want to wake him up? He's right, David. More gentler. Yes, Grandma. And careful on the curb over there, man. You don't want to shake him up. I'm uh, just trying to get the hang of this. You've got to learn to handle the more gentle. Yes, sir. All right, here you are. Safe across. Thanks again. Don't mention it. Glad to help out. Sweet, wasn't he? Mm, like gargantua. Never underestimate the power of a child, David. <laughs> but this one's getting to be a nuisance already. If one more person stops us... David, that's... more gentler. Don't tip the canoe. I see. The object is to let it come down on an even keel. Huh? Try this curb again. Right. It's a good time to practice without wrecking your son. I've got to try to get the wheels over the curb more easily. Right. I don't think the baby would want to stand on his head too much. Well, not the first few months, anyway. Well, up we go. Now, well, here we go. Uh-oh. Too much of an angle. Try going down the curb now that you're up it. It looks so simple. Oh, you catch on. Just let the back wheel slide over the edge and then let it down all at once. Mm-hmm. Don't say anything, but we are being watched. That woman. Let her watch. Maybe she's taking a field course in perambulating. Hmm. 
If this were a tractor, I wouldn't be having so much trouble. The trick is to pull the carriage back as you let it down. I think I see. Slower, David, slower. Easy, don't wake him. Mm -hmm. Excuse me, I've been watching you for the last two minutes. Maybe you have a few tricks of this trade, too. They'd be very welcome. What I wanted to say was, are you aware that your carriage is empty? What did you say? The carriage is empty. There's no baby in it. There isn't? No. She's right, Mother. The carriage is empty. You don't say. Take a look, Mother. Well, what do you know about that? I don't think you realize what this means. Certainly we do. We must have mislaid the baby someplace. Perhaps he's been kidnapped. No, I I don't think so. Do you, Mother? I don't think anybody wants him any more than we do. Do you, David? No, I I doubt it. Somehow you, you must have left him someplace, Mother. I wonder if it was the A&P. The A&P. Now, seriously, Mother. Now, this is the last time, the very last time, that I'm going to let you take this baby out alone. Do you understand? Well, my dear, you're perfectly justified. Of course, I know we could get another, but it wouldn't be the same. Pardon me, but aren't you going to do anything? Certainly we are, but we're trying to think of where we left him. The shoemakers. No, I don't think so, no. The butcher? I hope not. Such a fat little baby. Uh, do you have any ideas, madam? But, no. No, I haven't. That's a shame. He really might have been kidnapped. Oh, no, no. I, I assure you he wasn't. I, I think it was the butcher's. Well, I'd hate to walk all the way back there if it isn't. So would I. Let's think some more. Oh, well, I don't suppose you need me. Uh, what do you think, Mother? You've been very kind. Oh, don't mention it. Please don't. Almost a bit sorry I mentioned it. You pee the shoe makes the butcher. <laughs> 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 some people, some people, Grandma is crazy. <laughs> Them people, David, is us. Now, home Jeeves with the fabulous carriage. <laughs> the endless search for fabrics, linens, clothing, and food for the family makes shopping somewhat tiring at times. That's why I repeat a suggestion that many women find both sensible and pleasant. When you see the friendly sign that says, Here's Coca-Cola, stop there and refresh yourself. You're apt to buy more wisely when you shop refreshed. Well, we finally arrived home, Mr. King, safe and sound. With or without baby, Mrs. Brown? Without, of course. You know he's still in the hospital. (laughs) Yes, I know it. But the way you and David acted, the woman in the street would never know it. Perhaps we should have told her. Or maybe you'll uh, run into her again. Maybe you'll meet her when you do have the baby in the carriage. I hope so. Poor woman. She must think we're mad. Perhaps we are in our gay moments. Oh, Miss Brown, are uh, Claudia and the baby really going home to you tomorrow? Indeed, yes. And anxious as I am to have them, I'm not looking forward to the process of the move. You uh, you mean packing Claudia's presents and so forth? Exactly. I'd better be getting my strings and wrapping paper right now while I think of it. See you tomorrow, Mr. King. All right. Goodbye, Mrs. Brown. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are... Whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. And ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere. This broadcast of Claudia was supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. And now, here's a word from your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola.